Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture on uh, neoplasia. We have already discussed that uh, cancer in a sense is a genetic disease because genetic change is central to transformation of a, a benign uh, cell into a malignant cell. So, today we will be discussing uh, in this lecture the genetic changes that can occur in a cancer cell, what are the various kinds of genetic changes and about cancer genes itself, what are these cancer genes and how do they contribute to the, the development of cancer. <coughs> okay. <coughs> now, what are cancer genes? Now, another word we use to describe cancer genes is oncogenes. We know that onco means cancer, so oncogenes are nothing but cancer genes. Uh, but how are these cancer genes formed? What are they actually? We will come to that a little later. They are actually nothing but uh, uh, altered forms of normal genes that are uh, present within the cells that are known as proto-oncogenes. So, the proto-oncogenes become oncogenes. The second class of uh, uh, cancer genes are what are known as tumor suppressor genes. Even these tumor suppressor genes are normally found in cells and when they become altered or when they become lost in other words, they become uh, tumors uh, because the normal function is lost, the cell transforms into a malignant cell. The third class of cancer genes are genes that regulate apoptosis. We know that apoptosis or cell death is actually a kind of safety mechanism wherein a uh, damaged cell uh, dies uh, and it does not, you do not want uh, a damaged cell to propagate itself, so it undergoes apoptosis. When this regulatory mechanism is faulty, it can give rise to cancer. So, one of the classes of cancer genes are the genes that regulate apoptosis. And finally, we now know that there are there may also be genes that regulate interaction between tumor cells and host cells and that may be, be very important for carcinogenesis. Uh, this class of genes are especially important in the setting of tumor immunity because uh, we know that uh, there is a host response to cancer in the form of uh, uh, you know development of certain classes of lymphocytes and so on. And this kind, this interaction between the host cell and the uh, uh, cancer cells may be regulated by genes and these genes may be affected in cancer. So, these are the four classes of genes that may be uh, cause malignant transformation and may be important to drive tumorogenesis. Now, when I say, say that there are genes that, um, that are important in cancer and that are uh, key to the malignant transformation. In a sense then that cancer is a genetic disease, but this does not mean that all cancers are inherited. Only if these genes affect cells in the germ line will it become an inherited cancer. Then it can be transmitted from one generation to another. Only when these genes, the cancer genes are affected in the germ line. Otherwise, the, the genetic alteration occurs sporadically during the lifetime of an individual and it causes cancer and those genes are not transmitted to the offspring. Now, there are certain inherited cancer syndromes wherein these so called cancer genes are uh, transmitted in the germ line. Uh, we have already discussed a little bit of, about this in our uh, cancer epidemiology lecture. But uh, let me go through this a bit again, uh, p53 
a very important gene uh, if inherited uh, causes the leaf remaining syndrome. Um, RB gene causing retinoblastomas, the APC gene implicated in familial adenomatous polyposis cancer and BRCA1 and BRCA2 which are implicated in the very common breast and ovarian cancers uh, and we have many others. Let me not go into the each of these in detail. Uh, we have VHL in renal cell carcinoma and we have certain genes that are uh, responsible uh, for uh, um, uh, DNA repair, if defective, it can lead to various cancers and these syndromes are uh, xeroderma pigmentosis, Bloom syndrome and so on. Okay, um, we will set aside the inherited cancer syndromes for a while and talk about the, the normal uh, carcinogenic uh, or the cancer driving genes. So, first we will come to the first class of these genes that are the oncogenes. Now, as I already mentioned, genes that are recurrently affected uh, by genetic aberrations in cancers. Now, oncogenes are commonly affected uh, in cancers and that is why uh, they, they are the main class of cancer causing genes. Now, these contribute directly to the malignant behavior of cells. Uh, in other words, they are the driving uh, sort of uh, forces that make the cancer cell what it is. Now, usually the oncogenes promote increased cell growth. So, in other words, they cause the cell to proliferate more. Now, these are actually as I already mentioned mutated versions of normal cellular genes. So, there are these set of genes normally present in the cells what are known as proto-oncogenes which have certain normal functions and these are altered uh, during the formation of cancer and they become oncogenes. Usually, the, uh, these are dominant genes which means even if a single allele is inherited, the, uh, the cell can transform into a malignant cell. The second class of genes uh, uh, that are um, implicated in cancer are the tumor suppressor genes. Normally, even these genes are present in the cells and what is the normal function? They prevent uncontrolled growth. There are a very important set of genes that um, due to various actions prevent uh, uncontrolled growth. So, they ensure that there is normal coordinated and regulated proliferation of cells within any organ. Now, we, we learned that oncogenes are dominant whereas, tumor surface genes are usually you require loss of both the alleles for a tumor phenotype to occur. So, what are these the normal functions of these genes the tumor suppressor genes? So, they can be broadly put into two categories the guardians and the governors which means there are a set of genes that sense DNA damage whenever there is a DNA damage in a cell they apply break to that uh, the cell proliferation and do not allow the cell to progress and divide uh, further. So, these act as guardians. Uh, they sense the DNA damage and uh, act as guardians and they apply breaks to further cell proliferation and therefore, they act as governors. So, they have these two functions as guardians and governors where they sense DNA damage and apply breaks to cell proliferation. Now, the other two classes of genes I already mentioned are genes that regulate apoptosis. So, apoptosis as you know is a normal cellular mechanism wherein cells normally die uh, for whatever reason. One of the reasons is when there is DNA damage they uh, undergo cell death. This is a natural process. Now, there are genes that regulate apoptosis in the normal uh, human body in a normal cell of the human body and when these genes are affected uh, uh, they, they can uh, uh, for instance when an anti apoptotic gene is upregulated you can get cancer. So, genes that regulate apoptosis may also be affected in cancer. And the last uh, class of genes I already mentioned are the genes that regulate interaction between tumor cells and host cells and this is particularly important in the setting of immune surveillance of cancers. 
Right. So, now, then we move on to see, uh, we discussed what the, uh, uh, the cancer genes are, what are the classes of the different kinds of cancer genes. Now, what are the actual changes that can occur in these genes? So, what are the genetic changes in the, uh, uh, the cancer cells that can occur? Uh, are there mutations? Are there translocations? So, we will see what the actual changes are. Before we go into uh, the specifics of the changes, uh, we must understand that there are two kinds of mutations. Oh, now, uh, before that, what is a mutation? Mutation is the change uh, in a nucleotide sequence within a gene. Uh, even a single nucleotide change uh, uh, can be called as a mutation. So, now there are two kinds of mutations that can occur in uh, cancers. The first is driver mutation. Now, these driver mutations are like the main uh, mutations that alter the function of cancer genes and contribute to the development or progression of the cancer. So, they are the main changes and you need those changes for the carcinogenic uh, transformation to occur. These tend to cluster within cancer gene uh, uh, clusters and uh, usually they are acquired during uh, uh, the, the, the life cycle, uh, uh, the, the, the lifespan of an individual, but sometimes they can even be inherited. So, uh, uh, occasionally they are also inherited and then they contribute to the inherited cancer syndrome. So, these are the driver mutations. They tend to cluster around a certain group, what are known as the cancer cluster genes and then they are usually acquired, but they can occasionally be inherited. The second um, class is what is known as passenger mutations. Now, as the name indicates, they are these sort of ride along with the other mutations. They may not be the main driving force for a malignant transformation to occur, but we now know that these are also very important. Uh, 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 for carcinogenesis in the sense that, um, uh, for example, in melanoma due to UV radiation damage, there are passenger mutations or mutations that span across the entire genome, they are scattered throughout the genome. In contrast to driver mutations, they are not clustered within regions. Now, these passenger mutations are, um, uh, now we know that in, especially in the case of melanoma, we now know that uh, these mutations are all uh, particularly all uh, centered around genes that are linked to uh, UV damage. Uh, the, the damage that UV radiation causes. So, these they do have some purpose, it is not as though they are purposeless. So, they are linked to the UV damage, so they are important in carcinogenesis. And the second important uh, um, aspect of passenger mutations is that they could be mutations that confer resistance to certain uh, treatments that are used, the drugs that are used in cancer therapy. So, they could be the uh, mutations that are responsible for drug resistance that we commonly see as we treat cancers during the course of cancer treatment. Right. So, those are the two kinds of uh, mutations and uh, what are the actual genetic lesions that can occur apart from mutations? You have mutations, you have gene rearrangements, you can have deletions of uh, the genes or even uh, the end, uh, a certain length of chromosomes. You can have genetic uh, amplifications, you can have aneuploidy. Uh, we also know that microRNAs play an important role in cancer uh, uh, genesis. And finally, we can have epigenetic modifications. Now, we will go into each of this very briefly. First mutations, we already discussed what a driver and passenger mutations are, but what exactly happens in mutations? I uh, will give you some examples. Uh, there is either gain of function, which is the more common event. For instance, there could be a proto-oncogene such as the RAS gene. Uh, in a subsequent uh, uh, lecture, I will be talking more about this RAS gene and this is normally uh, ha acts as a signal transducer and this gene when mutated can become a proto-oncogene. 
or there may be loss of function of a tumor suppressor gene. The most common example is loss of uh, function or a mutation uh, causing loss of function of a p53 gene. Now, these mutations can occur on their own spontaneously or they may be caused by the carcinogenic agents uh, such as the chemical car carcinogens or the radiation induced or, or even be inherited. So, whatever the cause is, uh, if there is a mutation that happens within a proto-oncogene or a tumor suppressor gene that could turn uh, the cancer malignant, uh, the, uh, the cell malignant. The second uh, genetic lesion that we see in cancer cells are known as translocations. These translocations are commonly seen in hematolymphoid malignancies or, and sarcomas. Um, now, what are these translocations? Translocations are nothing but the juxtaposition of one uh, chromosomal part into another that may involve certain genes. So, this um, results in, in this may result in two things. One is either there is a result um, uh, uh, of over expression of a proto oncogene because it is placed next to a promoter or enhancer or it can create a fuse, fusion gene that will encode a novel chimeric protein. Now, what do you mean by that? I will give you some examples. This is for the first example is that of uh, Burkitt lymphoma. It is a very aggressive lymphoma that affects children very common in African population. Now, here what happens is there is a, a translocation between the 8 chromosome 8 and chromosome 14 that places the MYC oncogene that is uh, normally present in chromosome 8. MYC is a, uh, uh, an, a, g, a gene that codes for a transcription factor. Now, this is placed next to an immunoglobulin gene that is present on chromosome 14. So, you have a 8, 14 translocation wherein the Ig gene or the immunoglobulin gene is placed next to the MYC oncogene. Now, this results in an increased MYC protein uh, that is formed. So, there is an increased amounts of MYC protein that causes increased transcription in the cell. So, this is one effect that can happen because uh, oncogene is placed next to a, a, a gene that promotes or enhances the uh, transcription of the gene. The second situation is this uh, is that of uh, what we see in chronic myelogenous leukemia or CML what we call as a Philadelphia chromosome, which is nothing but a translocation between chromosome 9 and chromosome 22, which places the ABL gene present on chromosome 9 next to the BCR locus that is pro present on chromosome 22. And this hybrid of the two genes will form a, a tyrosine kinase with an enhanced activity. So, there is more of tyrosine kinase formation and that will and an altered tyrosine kinase which will drive the cell to proliferate. Now, this example is very dear to all of us because this is one of the first um, uh, molecular change within a cancer that led to a targeted therapy in uh, Philadelphia chromosome positive CML patients, wherein you can use a tyrosine kinase inhibitor to um, tackle this increased production of uh, tyrosine kinase in these patients. Um, with, with this chromosomal translocation, we also now know the concept of uh, oncogene addiction. Uh, what we mean by this is, uh, this translocation is absolutely necessary for the development of CML. CML may have many other genetic uh, changes, but the 922 is crucial and the, uh, the transformation is dependent. Uh, the cellular transformation is dependent on this particular translocation. Now, the other genetic changes in cancers include uh, deletions and amplifications. Now, uh, deletions usually occur in the context of uh, tumor suppressor genes because we now know that tumor suppressor genes have a whole lot of normal cellular functions. And deletions of these specific regions of chromosomes result in loss of particular uh, TSGs or tumor suppressor genes. 
The most famous example is the deletion of uh, 17P, uh, the sh uh, which uh, with loss of the TP53 gene within this uh, uh, location. And um, this uh, leads to uh, the loss of the normal function of P53 and uh, leads to the cell becoming malignant. Now, uh, proto-oncogenes may be converted uh, to oncogenes by gene amplification. So, gene amplification is another genetic change that can occur in cancers. And a very uh, good example of this is the NMIC gene, uh, which is amplified in neuroblastoma. Uh, Here is a picture that shows the NMIC gene that can be uh, amplified to a great extent in neuroblastoma, so much so that it can give rise to two kinds of uh, uh, pictures. One is what are known as double minutes and the second homogeneous staining region. It is called that because that entire uh, uh, band of chromosomes will not show banding. As we know in normal karyotyping, uh, you get bands within the chromosomes. So, this is expanded to such a, an extent that the, this region lacks the normal banding pattern that we see in, um, uh, in chromosome uh, banding. Now, the other change that we have in uh, uh, cancer cells is what is known as aneuploidy. Now, what is aneuploidy? Aneuploidy is chromosome number that is not a multiple of the haploid state. So, if it is not a multiple of 23, we call it aneuploid. For instance, 46 is diploid. Um, uh, when it the, run, uh, the numbers are random and not a multiple of 23, it, it is called aneuploid. Now, aneuploidy is extremely common in cancers. We see a whole lot of aneuploidy in various cancers. And uh, we really do not know whether aneuploidy is a result of abnormal cellular proliferation or is it a um, cause for the uh, cell to become malignant. So, it is not clear whether aneuploidy is a cause or consequence for cancer. Now, this results usually the aneuploidies result from errors of mitotic checkpoint. So, uh, there are checkpoints within the mitotic cycle. So, if there are errors there, it can lead to aneuploidy. Now, what does aneuploidy cause? Aneuploidy usually increases those chromosomes where the oncogenes are present. So, you have more copy numbers of those oncogenes and decreases those regions where there are tumor suppressor genes. So, there are less copy numbers of the tumor suppressor genes. So, either way it is uh, beneficial for the cell to become malignant. The other uh, new and emerging aspects of uh, genetic changes in cancers include the micro RNAs. Uh, micro RNAs are nothing but single stranded RNAs, which are about 22 nucleotides in length. They are normally negative regulators of genes. Now, they inhibit gene expression post transcriptionally. You know, know that gene, uh, uh, the genes are first transcribed or transcription occurs into mRNA and then it becomes translated into protein. Now, the gene expression is post after transcription, these are inhibited by micro RNAs. So, these normally control cell growth differentiation and survival. Now, again overactivity of these neg uh, negative regulators can reduce the tumor suppressor protein. So, uh, th if these micro -RNA RNAs are overactive, uh, uh, the, the normal function of the tumor suppressor uh, gene uh, product, the protein is reduced. So, this can lead to cancer. So, these kinds of uh, micro RNAs are called oncomias. Now, they are known to play a role in certain leukemias and lymphomas. And they are also another example would be uh, the down regulation of microRNA, which results in increased BCL2, which is an anti apoptotic protein. The last modification that can occur in cancers is what are known as epigenetic modifications. Now, what are these epigenetic modifications? Normally, there is a large part of the genome that is 
the non coding region. And uh, these are all suppressed due to DNA methylation and post translational modifications of histones. This is in a normal cell. Now, in, in cancers, we generally see that uh, there is a global DNA hypomethylation. So, there is less methylation of these regions in cancer cells. So, that means, uh, 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 the, because there is less methylation, there is over activity of these regions. Now, tumor suppressor genes again may be silenced by hypermethylation. So, the extra methylation could uh, cause the suppression of tumor suppressor genes. Uh, uh, the, so, then you have the loss of tumor suppressor gene again leading to cancer formation. So, epigenetic modifications are nothing but reversible heritable changes in gene expression and this modifications are mainly due to either DNA methylation or post translational modifications of the histones. So, they can act uh, either by global DNA hypomethylation or by silencing the, uh, uh, the uh, promoter sequences of tumor suppressor genes. So, either way it can lead to cancer. Well, we discussed um, certain uh, changes in cancers as though they you know uh, one change occurs in a certain cancer and that leads to malignant transformation. But we must bear in mind that it is not just a one hit and uh, that changes the cell into a cancer cell and, and it just grows from there. We must understand that it is a multi step process and it is usually due to accumulation of multiple genetic alterations that occur over a period of time. So, it a cancer cell may arise from a single cell, but as cancers grow they continue to evolve. They continue to become more aggressive and this is what is known as tumor progression. Now, how this happens? This happens because there is there are mutations that occur over time continuously and only the fittest cells that give them a, an advantage to grow and proliferate survive. I al we have already discussed this, there is a Darwinian selection there and, uh, uh, and that is how the tumor progresses and becomes more aggressive and less responsive to therapy. Um, for example, if you are uh, treating a tumor with a certain drug, uh, the tumor cells will develop mutations that confer resistance to that drug and which will, uh, there will be proliferation of cells that are no longer um, responsive to the drug that you give. So, this is the basis for uh, resistance to drug therapy in cancer. So, this causes a genetic heterogeneity within the cancer. It is shown in this uh, uh, picture, a normal cell is, um, uh, you know, in, there is a damage in, induced by a carcinogen, which makes it into a tumor cell and it starts to progress, but then within the tumor cell, it acquires additional changes and uh, subclones develop of these tumor cells and finally, you have uh, a ball of tumor there, which has different subclones of cells with different properties. So, because they have uh, uh, developed different mutations uh, trying to overcome certain, um, uh, certain obstacles like some have become non-antigenic, some have become invasive, some clones are uh, have the metastatic potential and um, some uh, clones have an increased sensitivity to growth factors. So, that is how the, uh, the whole tumor, there are different subclones of cells uh, with different mutations. Okay, to summarize, uh, in this lecture, we have uh, dealt with the genetic changes that occur in cancer cells. So, there can be two kinds of mutations, driver mutations and passenger mutations. Uh, passenger mutations, importantly, they confer drug resistance. The genetic changes that can occur are mutations, gene rearrangements, deletions, amplifications and aneuploidy. Overexpression of microRNA may reduce the expression of tumor suppressor genes, because microRNAs normally are negative regulators of gene expression. Tumor suppressor genes and DNA repair genes may be silenced by epigenetic mechanisms also, 
like um, uh, DNA methylation and histone uh, modifications. Carcinogenesis is a multi-step process and the end result is a, a, is, a, is a mass which contains different subclones with different mutations and cancers continue to evolve and progress which is why they become aggressive and difficult to treat. Thank you.